Welcome to another episode of the Global Green Action Project, a place where you get to meet amazing heroes doing great changes in the world to make it a more compassionate, kinder place through animal, humanitarian, and environmental initiatives. I'm your host, Jennifer. The conversation we're going to have today is a continuation of one we started in a previous video about the importance of uniting global water citizens around the world, which include educators, scientists, thought leaders, global family, and even our youth, so that they can be empowered to work collaboratively through education and a virtual platform that helps us expedite healing for all life on this planet. Having said that, we look forward to carrying on that conversation with the incredible Dr. Kat Schreier right now. Thinking of um, youth, for example, and professors, uh, young women who might be out there at university or college, any words of wisdom thinking of following a similar path to yours? Yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's, um, it can be a tough feel, actually, for, uh, you know, there's, there's so many tremendous opportunities to do something that's really important in the world. Um, and at the same time, it is, uh, it has historically been very male, <laughs> very, um, you know, really sort of a military structure. You know, uh, you know, a lot of our early water works, it was, it was a matter of national defense. And, um, uh, in, in, so for women entering the field, um, two things you want to look for. One is you definitely want to find very strong, not just mentors, but champions. People are going to speak up for you and say, yes, no, she's really committed to this. This is not someone who's just going to, you know, thought that science was cool and I'm going to just work for a few years until I go get married and have kids and then just quit. You know, they want to see that people are really committed. And you want to have people who are going to really pull you up into leadership you know when you're in these fields whether you're in science engineering law economics whatever um getting the degrees is just an entry point and then it's a matter of working your way up and being seen busy being visible within your profession is a big part of it and so teaching uh, and a lot of the skills that we teach are often taught to entrepreneurs. They're not often taught to people who are in, uh, you know, in a, working for someone else. But being able to say, yes, oh, and I also have this course, and we've had hundreds of people, thousands of people come into my course, that elevates you as a leader. And our goal is really you know, not just to teach people how to do courses or how to speak or even how to advocate, which is uh, our, our other uh, program that works, the, the Virtual Water Advocacy Lab, is, um, is to really assume leadership and know how to use the internet properly as a means of doing that. Not to say that we don't also meet in person, but you can do so much more when you incorporate your online strategy, when you build your virtual community, when you build uh, your capacity to communicate, to educate, to engage, to enroll online. I love the concept of the hybrid uh, initiative, right? So it's, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You put it together and you get that whole perspective that ultimately is the epitome of great education. Mm -hmm. And it allows you know, I'm going to use the I'm going to use the jargon of education where we talk about multi intelligence approach and being able to um, cater to the needs of of the educator who will serve others. And yeah, so when you're able to help them in these multifaceted ways, they just shine just naturally because you're giving them the tools to empower them to just be who they're meant to be follow their dream follow their passion. That is one of our taglines people passionate about water. And, and so often people in the water and environmental space, they've been told their whole lives, oh, you're too technical, you're too analytical, nobody can understand you, just go, go back to your lab and we'll take care of the communications, we'll take care of the outreach, we'll take care of the you know, education. And, and really these you know, folks have a lot to say. It's just teaching them the, the methods of 
finding their right people, attracting them, educating them in an effective way. So they don't get a chance to say what they want to say. And we provide them with those skills and understanding of how to find the right people that want to learn what they have to teach, how to attract them into their world, how to educate them using these multiple facets of you know, different learning styles that we can incorporate you know, with downloads, with video, with audio, with, with um, lots of opportunity for engagement in Q&A, for actually taking action on what they're learning, and then how to enroll them into taking their next step. And we would love to have people join us uh, where your first step to doing that is helping us with our ongoing efforts with our state of online water education survey. We would love to see more. I, I understand that you might have something that you want to share. Would this be a good time to share that right now? Yes, so absolutely. We are right now signing people up uh, just really simply to join us for this survey you can see that um you know as you can see it's, it's people who are getting very excited about an online program and i'm sure they all are in the same bubble so that they're and they're vaccinated and, and so they're okay sitting next to each other during covid but they're they're on the computer and they're excited and and this down here is a copy of uh, the cover of our state of online water education survey so if you would love like to join us on that survey that helps us to get a sense of where you are in terms of virtual water education. What are you experiencing right now? Are you, are you interested? Are you, are, you, are you trying to educate others about what you know? Um, what have been your experiences, your challenges, your frustrations, your aspirations, what do you wanna learn? Um, so we'll, we'll have a chance to talk about that. And that also gets you into our world so that we can you know, if there is a possibility that you might be a good fit for the Water Citizen Academy, the Virtual Water Education Lab, we can have further conversations. Um, but at any rate, that you're able to really learn more about what we're doing to, to, to raise all boats and, and elevate the water dialogue through virtual water education. And that's fantastic. And that ties into how we can reach you for further information to join your program. So this is obviously a great way to do that. Are there any other ways that you'd like to share with us so that we can continue on the conversation and continue learning and taking action to do great things in the world? We are going to be rolling out a lot of great stuff this year. Um, if you want to join the survey that you can reach at watercitizen.org slash water education survey. So that's watercitizen.org slash water education survey. Uh, we have a number of media outlets where we keep people up to date on what's happening in the water world uh, in, a, in a much more engaging style, your typical you know, trade publication, professional journal, whatever. Uh, it's called Water Citizen News. Um, you also have the water show, so thewatershow.org, uh, watercitizen.org slash the water show. We have watercitizennews.com. So I don't want to overwhelm people with too many options, but right now the best way to get started is uh, at watercitizen.org slash water education survey. And that would really help us out to hear from as many different people as possible who are engaged in water, they're, whether they're professionals in water, whether they're active in their communities, whether they're working with a nonprofit, what have you, whatever it is you're doing in your area of the world related to water and sustainability. If you have a, a desire to get your information out through online courses, please do join us for the water education survey. That's watercitizen.org slash water education survey. A couple of other opportunities we have available. Uh, you know, for one thing, we have been, for as long as we've been around, we have had interns. We have had some amazing young people that, A, they learned some really great professional skills of how not to just do academic exercises, but, but be in charge of projects, be in charge of tasks, and, and have the opportunity to create something that helps us further our mission. And a lot of our interns have gone on to some great careers in water, in the environment, in you know, working for top companies or leading venture 
capital funds on environmental projects. I mean, really great stuff. Um, and we also have, uh, for anyone who's interested in being more effective online, we, we created an online training. This is actually a free training. Um, we offer it just every, every so often we can do uh, you know, if you have a particular group, we can do a, a tailored presentation just for your group. Uh, but it is a uh, short workshop on how to avoid three massive mistakes that water and environmental professionals make that keep them feeling frustrated and misunderstood and generally ineffective when presenting online. That is so amazing. I love it. And the power of global community when we unite and do these kinds of programs is just such a great way to heal in so many ways. You've kind of developed this amazing legacy. You've established this program. If I were to ask you what your legacy, if you could leave a, a, a legacy in words, what would it be? Oh God. It, it has been so gratifying to see things really coming together the last couple of years you, you know there's there's like COVID is a horrible you know this, this pandemic has has had so many negative impacts and yet it's also opened up so many opportunities and and for us for you know for years we were trying to communicate the potential benefits of going virtual of of providing opportunities for small and economically disadvantaged utilities for uh, you know, low-income communities, for communities of color, women who might not feel comfortable at you know, the big conferences, uh, which is where everything was happening. We had to be able to show up at these thousand dollar a head conferences, uh, you know, not to mention all the travel costs and everything else, just to find out what was really going on in water. And, and so, you know, and, and having, having some little retreat to talk about water equity in Aspen, Colorado or something and say, well, how come there's no people of color here. And it's like, really? <laughs> and, and I think people have really understood now that, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, these communities don't have access to internet. And, and, it, and it is true to some extent, but at the same time, we've seen a lot of people who, who have felt more comfortable showing up and engaging without microaggressions, without some of the other challenges associated with going to live events. And, and so it has created greater diversity, greater equity, and not just in water, but also in water knowledge. And to be able to have this Water Citizen Academy continue to grow. To be able to have that as a place, not only for our programs, but for all of these amazing programs that our students are creating, that we can be that, that Udemy for, for water knowledge, you know, and, and that place where people can show up and share their pro their ideas their expertise and pass that on down we have a huge issue with yeah you know, the, the silver tsunami you have all the baby boomers retiring but they're not gone they may have retired from their organization but we can work with them to share their knowledge and pass that on to next generation whether it's about some water treatment method or or how to have a more diverse workforce or how to develop leadership and our leadership program as well. I mean, I think this is something that that is so needed that we need to empower water and environmental leaders to be virtual leaders, not to just sit back and hand it off to some communications consultant, some marketing consultant who are using these mass marketing, mass media methods and plunking it down the internet, calling it good. It's not about blasting eyeballs. It's about creating conversations and community and, and real solutions. Real solutions in community, nurturing, nurturing a better global family and a better world. Amazing, amazing. Do you wish to share any further thoughts before we close today? Yeah, just that 
I would love to support as many people on as many water related issues as we possibly can. You know, my, my background is across water and energy and water and food and water and habitat and all the water and, you know, and they, there's so many different ways we can think about water and there's so much need to pass that knowledge on and to do it in a really effective and engaging way. So anything that we can do help, please do reach out to Water Citizen. Please join our family. Please join our efforts to create amazing virtual water education programs, presentations, courses, workshops, events, whatever it takes to bring people together. We want to be part of it. We hope that you'll join us. You are such an inspiration to us all in terms of what leadership is and in terms of passing that knowledge on to others so that they can be empowered to do the same. A true global citizen. And don't we need global citizens in this world now more than ever to rise up and work collaboratively so that we can make true enduring change for all. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, your expertise, and for your compassion for life and healing for everyone on this planet. Thank you for everything that you're doing. It was an amazing show. Thank you for this opportunity. And thank you to your listeners for joining us today and being part of this effort. You know, you have power, you have the capability to be a part of the solution 